We are in. It is the Gladiators Legion. Branded, of course, uh, very close with the OWL team and Mayhem Academy, where they have just taken the Mayhem logo, added an A in it, and made the bomb pink. <laughs> I mean, I think this is more or less what Monty's been asking for on social media with Mayhem, right? Just rebrand your colors, go for like that Miami Vice feel. So, or Vice City feel, but now, uh, yeah, we are going to be loading on to Sanctum, and right now, as we take a look at the compositions, we've got Panker on that Orisa on the opposite end. There we go, Moopy swaps off. And so, there's going to be the hook, so the environmental kills very alive for Mayhem Academy. Oh, I've no doubt about it. And meanwhile, we're curious about the ideas like, well, what is uh, going to be on on Round the main cam side? Well, he's going to be projectile DPS to start things out. He's going to be running a Pharah here on Sanctum, where it can work out, but if you don't get the first attack, you have to swap off quickly. He's going to be looking for boops off into the pit, but Panker can be looking for those halts as well. Long range poke coming out from Gladi Gladiator's Legion as they got the Soldier 76 and Blase, of course, on that Junkrat. Very potent duo in combination with that Orisa. Blase starts it off. Moopy falls. Paintbrush gets the res. And so now it's 66 once again. Both teams jockeying for position here on the high ground. Well, I knew Legion Shift went in on that. They had an opportunity where the main tank was down, but they just continued poking. So it wasn't as decisive as it otherwise could have been off of that Junkrat spam getting in over the top. Gladiators, though, still very much in a good position here. They are dominating the point. You see Panker using a reset to success. Did he get the boop off? No, I do not think he halted anyone to the ledge. He is going to be brought right back up, though, and the fight continues down on the point. It's a grind, but Gladiators Legion, they're going to take first control. They do, and they will force them away, but we're seeing the difference between playing the Farah and playing that Junkrat. Junkrat puts out so much more damage in these combined spaces. Now, Krems, though, comes in. Both tanks down. Blase will keep us alive for Gladiator's Legion for now, as Zah has fallen. And that's what happens. Tight uh, hitbox, or excuse me, uh, ceilings. Tight ceilings indeed, but it's uh, actually more in the back. Takes down two. Mam Academy going to be just... Going back in off of a Zenyatta, just breaking it through out of nowhere when the fight was in the cleanup phase. So, Mam Academy getting back in. And they're actually in a very good spot to hold here as well. Yep, they've got the Orisa. She's uh, established herself on the point. They have to worry about that halt hook combination. Gladi Gladiator's Legion do. Panker already using his Fortify, but he's dropped down low. He will survive, so that's valuable healing. Rolf getting close to his Transcendence, but here's the Tactical Visor coming out from Corey. Corey's on the flank right now, but doesn't really get as much as he wants to be answered in turn by Transcendence, but Panker was able to bring Mikey A into the pit. Mikey A didn't even get a chance to use the Tac Visor. Off, off the flank barrage, only gets one. Here comes Rube on with the Transcendence. Gonna be keeping the Legion alive here on the point. And the Legion now well on their way. They still don't need to get rid of this final tank. They're gonna do just that. Poopy thrown into the air. The delay is over. And the Legion have taken the fort. Yep, Gladiator's Legion, they had to commit both of their support ultimates into that. Pooks had to go for the resurrection, so Rolf went ahead uh -oh. and used whoa, 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 whoa. the more once again starts it off. Blase. Uh, this is boombox tier craziness, like vintage boombox, if you're going to be getting pickoffs like that. It's given a window here for Mamma Cammy, but uh, self-destruct, run, float faster. Nope, not going to happen. Gods takes down two, and Gods saves what could have been an advantage there for Mamma Cammy. Yeah, that's just one of those uh, diva angles that you that you know is going to uh, confirm a kill. And so now Gladiator's Legion, they take the lead, 55%. It's taking up Paintbrush, though. Helps it end. It's going to have that Valkyrie. It's going to provide lots of AoE heals for Mayhem Academy as they make this approach. But once again, like you had mentioned, it's so difficult to make your way back onto the point when you're playing that far up. Well, Mikey's coming in from the side looking for a little bit of separation. He gets a Supercharger, attack Visor up. Doesn't, oh, no, he's actually going to go straight in. No fear from Mikey, but he probably should. I, I was looking at this like, really? And yeah, really, but he just gets immediately thrown into the dumpster. Attack Visor out of it early on. Mam Academy struggling to get through here. Here comes the tire from Blase, moving around the side. It's anti-air, it's over the top. Oh no, well no, it still gets Moopy, still on target. Good enough, Moopy and that Turbo Charger down now. More presses forward, he's gonna use that Transcendence as Zob by to kill onto a wall. Krems has just been the foundation for Mayhem Academy. Every time they make their way onto this point, he finds at least two kills, preferably onto the tanks. Panker has not been having a good time so far. Well, the fine thing too is they were able to bring that back after the bravest Soldier 76 ultimate I've ever seen, that is really good to bring a fight back from that end when you lose someone early on, you have to burn a res, they've lost attack visor, etc. 
Gladiator's Legion, though, one fight away from making this around. Corey coming in off the flank, the rest of them moving in from the front. Za holding back just a bit. Can't get caught out by Corey here in this tack visor. Holding the back, poking Farah, holds the barrage, bounces back in, and now he's looking for it. In over the top, Panker in his sight, drops the barrage, and the defensive matrix not enough, still gets plus A. Still gets plus A, Pooks has popped that Guardian, excuse me, that Valkyrie for now, but is it gonna be enough? They're being forced back, 87% for Mayhem Academy as they're cleaning up Gladiator's Legion now. This might be the final fight. Might be the final fight indeed. Roof though is able to get Mikey towards the end. Self-destruct making room here for the Legion. 96% to 97%. It is going to be an overtime as Za ah, starting to equal it right back up. A terror in the skies. And now it's up to the Legion to get back here at some point as Za ah continues to crush from the side. Doesn't let Panker get back in. And Blase doing anything to try and bring this one back. Very close to getting reset. Will still a little bit of hope in this game for the Legion. Indeed, but here it is. Tactical visor for Mikey A right now, but it's headed away. Glad it is. Gladiator's Legion is going to go ahead and break the line of sight, but it's Krebs once again. God, along with Panker, just have not been able to deal with this Roadhog. He's just on the point. He is able to take up everything Rolf hooked in. It's Mubi to finish it off. And with that, Mayhem Academy take the first point. I think the teams are actually conspiring to kill us here. If they're going to continue having close games like this, that was, that was just round one. Back and forth, uh, absolutely great stuff that we've been getting here today. And Man, th this is another game where if everything is like that, it could end up going five. I'm not against that at all. It, we have seen some great Overwatch today. Now, Gladiators, they do have to bring this back down. Map point for Mayhem Academy. Za hovering over that Sombra. One thing I will note, this has been Panker's playground. It was actually, this is one of the first maps I remember seeing Panker play on, and it was five. stupid. I just remember getting like two, three kills, like every other fight. We'll see if he can do the same here, but his positioning on this particular stage of the ball is sublime. Yeah, this time we'll see if they check Krems. Uh, when he was on that Roadhog, he was just doing whatever he wanted, and that's basically what a Roadhog does. If you don't uh, deal with him, you don't put the orbs on him and uh, focus him down now. Za on the Sombra, just getting some chip damage off. Already at 25% towards that EMP, making his way into the back line. He's trying to pepper down Corey, but he's got the orb on him. Two things, Panker was able to zone two people out of the fight early on there and still keep good HP. And now he's already ahead of his team, moving off to the right, cutting off the entry as Blase comes in over the top. It sets Sets up Corey Blase to come in from the flank and just ruin My Mayhem Academy there. Charged. Really nice positioning from the Legion, and that gives them the first control. Again, we're seeing that synergy between the DPS duo. Uh, Blase over the top, like you had mentioned, he was just peppering them down, and Corey was there to finish them off. Along with Pinker, of course, now Gladiator's Legion already at 20% here. Corey. Just waiting, trying to get some information about where Mayhem Academy approach them. It's going to be the high ground now. The dive comes on out, but they don't have a target. Don't have a target, and now Gladiator's Legion is able to hold back right now. It doesn't have to do anything crazy. It's up to Mayhem Academy. They can move, but Panker was caught out. They knew who the target was. They took him out, but the problem is, is that they took him away so away from the fight that Legion can back out a little bit here, and that's what they're going to do. Look at this position. They're going to back out, wait for Panker to get back into the fight. Very smart play coming in. Yeah, Mikey A along with Steva just drawing the attention away. Moore starts Ooh. it off once again. Blase falls. Mikey A with a great pulse bomb taking out Pooks. Now they're just going to be able to clean up. Corey tries to keep this alive now, but still they are losing bodies. There's an EMP and somehow they're doing it. Pink comes in with a primal rage now, but still Mikey A, this nutter is just creating chaos across the point. Panker's killed two with primal rage. He's still moving around. Blase in on the other side. Legion has held control of the point all the while right now as Panker is still somehow alive. He picked off two people and finally oh. it's a pulse bomb that ends his life and ends the terror and the delay coming to an end, but what a start there for Legion, 76% to zero. 76 to zero, almost everything committed into that fight now. Hey. More, he's gonna have to reset himself. He's uh, going over to Zenyatta, wanna deal I with Panker just a little bit more. Sound barrier, not gonna be up for a long time on the side of Mayhem Academy, while Legion will have it soon. Pooks sitting at 94%. Now, Mayhem Academy, a little bit split on the defense here, trying to cover all ends. Krebs gets caught out a little bit far out, giving an opportunity here to the Legion, and they know it. That's why they dropped the barrier. They're moving in, but 
really, Mammoth Cavi is so spread out that there's not too many targets. They're going to settle for the Winston. That's good enough. Now they move in six on five. All, everyone healthy. Mayhem scattered. Very little chance they can do anything to push this back. And instead, they're going to get gunned down by Boisse on the flank. Yeah, that was a free tactical advisor for him. He had nothing to worry about whatsoever. 80% now instantly going for that high ground. Gods, he's got the self-destruct. Does he have a good angle for it? Well, there's multiple ways you can make this work. It doesn't even have to really use it. You can just use it to read back in the middle of the fight. Bamba Academy, though, they have to be careful about how they want to approach this here. They are going to be going up the gut with one flanker up the right side. Now they have to touch a point directly. They have to make this a point-centered fight. And they got rule for Leon. That's a big advantage here to Mam Academy. And now they're going to have to self-destruct and probably rage to delay. But it's a very rough start for Legion. I think you just hold it at this point. That was a very interesting approach coming out from Mayhem because they set their tank line along with their divers up front while the supports were still staying back basically over at spawn. And so they left their uh, supports vulnerable, but somehow without the heals, they were still able to get onto Rolf. That was just some clean decision making coming out from Mayhem Academy and they capitalized on him. They capitalized and then some. Now. See Mikey here to the side, about to have a pulse bomb. Would love to get an early pickoff, but unfortunately he's in the wrong position. Wrong door for Mikey right now. Gonna have to go back up the other way. They engage the Mam Academy, better late than never. Into the transcendence zone, and Panko was able to get saw off the primal rage. The assassin with this Winston gets the early entry pick, and now it's gods and this tank line of the Legion leading the way, moving forward against Mayhem Academy, and they should be in free take on this. They have two man advantage right now. Gods is playing Gatekeeper here. Is the self-destruct? Does it connect? No, but they're not able to get out to the point. It's flipped now in favor of Gladiator's Legion. It's going to be overtime. Gods finds another kill. Krems going down. Krems has not been able to be as effective on this team as he was with that Roadhog, and with overtime ticking away with Blase, just trying to find any target. He finds one. The delay is not there. Zal will fall, and with that, it is going to get tied up. One one to one. Legion striking right back. And what a way to do so as well. Just very good tank positioning. Multiple moments in that last series where, whether it be Panker or be it Gods, the tanks were setting the tone. They made things very easy for Corey and Blasse on the cleanup. But now as we move on to Shrine, are we gonna see some more Farah coming out? Zod did run it during Sanctum, which typically you don't quite see. A lot of teams do favor the Junkrat over it, but right now he's gonna be sitting on that Sombra instead. It is a little bit weird that you wouldn't see him go Farah on Shrine in particular, but I think it's just one of those cases where you run it early on Sanctum, even more as a surprise strategy, where you're just looking for the somewhat cheap, unexpected kills, but no, he's gonna play more by the book here or the new book, as it were, in running the Sombra. Legion, meanwhile, they are playing this by the old book, the book of Winston Diva, Double Flanker Dive. But they execute it quite well. Already Blase just trying to get some poke off. Krems is again on that Diva now. So we'll see if he can turn this performance around. Movie tries to push forward, but instantly has to tuck tail and turn around. Blase still getting some poke off. He's going to dash into the Tracer. Mikey A able to dodge him. And Gladiator's Legion right now winning the poke battle overall. Mayhem Academy has to be careful. Krems and Mupi both end up low. That's why they have to retreat and why Legion ends up getting this first point. Now, they can re-engage lock quicker. It wasn't a fully lost fight, but they had to disengage and give up that initial setup. So now you have Legion moving back in against Academy, but it's too late. Mupi immediately focused down, and it's just this tank presence of the Legion that's not letting Academy get the engagements they want. Yeah, early on, we're seeing a little bit of a difference so far in the performance of the Divas Gods has been getting the upper hand over Krebs, but here we go. We've got to transcend it. The Gladiators want to push back Mayhem Academy. They're going to fall back. Nothing really comes of it. Might find some staggered kills here. Well, they might find it. And now it's going to be Mayhem with the barrier committing to this fight, but I don't think they have the greatest position. I mean, they are going to demech the D.Va here as Boopy comes in for the flank. And hey, it's actually starting to work out. They have the Legion on the retreat, but you have Panker and Primal Rage right now. He finds oh. another kill to Lucio. Every Primal Rage is a kill here so far, and he gets two. What this in the is world? what we were expecting coming out from Panker here. His tank presence is just so oppressive now. Mupi trying to do his best with his own Primal Rage. Finds two pokes and Rolf are gone. Winston's aren't supposed to do this. This is why I was hyping Panker up coming in here. There's a flow. There are rules to Overwatch. The rules do not include your Winston being your primary assassin. Good lord, man.
Moopy gets the upper hand up against Panker now. It looks like Mayhem Academy, they have the man advantage, self-destruct. Here's a play, Gladiator's throwing everything at this, and it's paying off. They got the kill off the Zaw. Paintbrush is gone, more is gone. And with that, it was a long, drawn-out fight. We thought it was going to go over to Mayhem. Gladiators pull it out from their clutches. And Gladiators now one fight away from taking the round and thus taking the map. Don't have too much in the tank, but they do have a transcendent. So you have the metagame right now between Za and Wolf, where they're going to move in, try and force the transcendents out, or just delete the Zenyatta early on. But they get Panker, they get rid of the problem, but more is going to die immediately. It's 5 on 5. EMP out from Za. And I don't know if it was in time, it didn't hit the people. God's still regulating here on the point. The Legion in a great position right here. The Academy starting to get poked right down. And again, it is that difference between the D.Va play, between Gods and Krebs that's coming up huge so far now, especially here on Shrine. And there it is, Corey with the double kill, forcing them off. It's going to be Legion to take the first map here on Nepal. Winston play, Winston play, Winston play is kind of yeah. kind of where I'm saying that there were. I don't think the Arisa setup they had on Sanctum really worked out super well. I don't think that's actually Panker's strong suit. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when the rest of your team is playing really well and then every single time a Winston gets primal, not only is he living as Winston's do and disrupting, yeah. but I, I, I think it actually was every single time getting a kill onto a support, onto a DPS, it's just stupid levels of value that you should not be seeing from a Winston. Now, Gods and Panker, they were definitely working well together. That diva winston combination. Panker was just staying alive for so long because, well, Gods, he was staying alive for so long. When you have both of your tanks able to synergize that well, your DPS are allowed to do anything they want. Yeah, and that's what we saw there, right? Where the DPS were enabled to have plenty of space, plenty of room to work with. And we saw towards the end that the focus really did become the tanks and removing them. But the more you focus on the tanks, the more that you're going to have more plays coming out from players yeah. like Blasse, where it's just like, oh, this is nice. Well, here's your uh, here's your Moopy, uh, your Moopy replay for you guys to... Yeah, I mean, it was going back and forth <laughs> between Moopy and Panker, but ultimately, like, Panker did uh, edge out the lead here for that victory for Legion. Man, this was great to watch. Moopy, of course, in this moment, chasing down Panker at the Discord or bottom. It's like, no, it's a little no escape. But yeah. <laughs> Please, stop, stop, stop ruining my team. <laughs> so you, I guess it's safe to say that tank support was kind of the, the feature of that game. Yeah, I mean... One of the crucial points for when we went out to Sanctum was that Mayhem Academy, they were running that Orisa Hog combination, and that synergy there is absolutely strong. Enabling a Hog to stay alive, he does so much DPS. While on the opposite end, Legion, they try to run, I believe it was Orisa Diva, and that synergy just quite isn't the same. Both of them, they have defensive cooldowns. Sure, there are the micro missiles, but you don't have that same synergy with that Orisa as a Diva. Well, the other thing, too, is that it's pretty rare to have an Orisa hard carry a game on their own. That's a case where the Orisa, yeah. you're, it's more about enabling the other DPS players. There was more of a burden placed on Corey and Blasse in that particular instance. So, yeah, I mean, you can't really be the full hero on Arisa most of the time, unless mm -hmm. you drop, like, three people into a pit, in yeah. which case, you are the hero. Congratulations. Well, uh, <laughs> Mayhem did lose that match, which means that they get first pick for maps. They're going with Numbani. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Gladiators want for a hybrid. I mean, uh, Numbani is just a, a map most teams are comfortable with, especially if they go for a dive style here. Um, again, it lends itself well to the hero pools, uh, particularly of Mayhem. They can go for that far if they want to. They can go for a dive if they want to, or they can go for a uh, Soldier 76 play, a lot of hit scan play. So this does play well into their wheelhouse. The one thing that's rough for them, and I don't think it was any better if they decided to go to Hollywood, although let me just say for the record, Shame on the teams here. Three chances go to Hollywood, and you make us go to Nambani every time, please. The variety is the spice of life. However, uh, moving into this, it's still Nambani is a one where Winston can run wild, so I think Gladiators look at this and are like, okay, yeah. we'll go to Nambani. Let's go. <laughs> so you're, they, you're saying that they didn't even attempt to leash Winston? I, I, I just think that they didn't really have a good choice to get yeah. rid of Winston either way. It's like, <laughs> He's oh, going to be there. <laughs> yeah. But I think they're just trying to play more towards their strengths uh, yeah. instead of trying to, like, nerf the other side. At this point, it's the lesser of two evils, and uh, Numbani would definitely be the lesser of two. If they wanted to nerf a Winston player, they just need to build a time machine, plant someone at Blizzard, and go, make sure King's Row is the key map for hybrid. <laughs> like, let us run King's Row, and then you can yeah. run Ryan Zarya and kind of get away with not running Winston. Yeah, I mean, we really haven't, we haven't seen any Ryan yet. 
I believe someone hovered over it for a moment and then decided <laughs> against it, and that was about it. Well, but, you know, as the pool opens up, we'll, we will see. Reinhardt well, suffered a lot of rejection. Perhaps <laughs> this will be your game. Oh, we're just kidding. We are not going to game, um, which is fine, because I actually wanted to see if you guys had any predictions for this. Right now, my prediction coming into the series was Gladiator's Legion would take it. Nothing happened in that last game to make me change my prediction. I mm -hmm. think this actually might just end up being a 4-0 here today for mm. Legion, the way they're playing, just because I, I feel like in Overwatch right now, tank play is what makes teams more than anything else, and you have a big veteran in Gods as Flex, and he's backed up by Picker who's been playing out of his mind. Yeah, and you know, Gods did fulfill that D.Va role for a while, and he was doing it while it was out in Apex, where D.Va just ran rampant. Mm. And so he, he knows a lot of these tricks. He knows how to deal with um, all these different compositions. So you're saying Gladiators. Legion. Oh, you're saying Legion. <laughs> yeah. All right, one Gladiators, one Legion. Let's see well, who's right. Well, in a sense, right. we can both be right here, <laughs> but I, I prefer calling them the Legion until the times where I call them the Gladiators. Either way, as we move in here to Nambani, it's going to be Fam Academy, not wasting a whole lot of time here, going with more traditional dive, but uh, they're also running the Silver here. So again, it's going to be a little bit more pokey. Triple DPS, solo support. I guess you could count Sombra as a support, but here it is. This is the thing, you don't have quite the dive, right, without that Genji in there. Moore is going to try his best to dislodge it, but it's Painter that starts it off. Paintbrush is gone. Immediately in good position to get Paintbrush. They do switch back onto Painter, but the damage has been done. They end up giving their Winston for that punish, and as a result, we're seeing the Legion hold on here to begin with. But now it's starting to get back and forth, right? And both teams down two. Mam Academy still applying pressure. They've taken the Soldier out of the equation, so they really want to push right now. They don't want to give Blase time to get back up here onto a point. But Panker's going to be rejoining here in a second. And the window that they might have had starting to perhaps close, but they're diving right in. Take a look at how much damage Gods has actually done. He's already at 90% towards that self-destruct. It's not even a minute yet. Zah is still working on that on that EMP now, but a great Biotic Nade. Pooks comes up huge for the Legion. Bio Nade with a follow-through from Panker. They get down more, and there will be no more at that point, as Mayhem is going to have to go back and reset once more. This is a very hard committal onto triple DPS solo support. Uh, two minutes and 30 seconds left. I mean, if this does not work out for them, ooh, Corey already shutting it down. More has fallen. More again, the whipping boy of choice for Gladiator's Legion, focusing him down every time, and why not? Soldier's one hero that can solidify this point for a team as they move in. You put the soldier on the top, he does the rest of the work for you if you can make space, but more is getting focused down every time. However, EMP is on deck here for Mam Academy as they move forward. EMP is ready. Will Pooks be able to get that nano boost off onto Pinker before anything happens? Will Rolf fall to that EMP? Dive comes out. Mayhem Academy trying oh, to catch again? Pinker with that nano boost already gets paintbrush. Blase finds a second kill for the Legion. Now more tries to push forward with that nano visor, but it's into the face, into the fists of Pinker as he finishes him off. And this is the ridiculous part about Pinker's gameplay is that he knows the just best places to ambush and make supports hate their lives. Yeah. This is not a coincidence. This is not, hey. I've seen him do this way before the series. This is just an easy read for the Legion, right? They know that Soldier 76 wants to go for that tactical high ground. They know they want to go for that deployment. tactical visor. And so that's where the Ana and the Soldier 76 are going to be. That's why before that, Corey was able to get the pulse bomb on some more. But now here's the dive. Blase drops low, tactical visor pump as he presses out. Look at how Panker dove in, split the tanks, and gave Blase the room he needed there. I Again, knew the right place to put himself. Plus, they have plenty of room to work with. And by the way, Corey, Gods, these are all other players coming in from the side and just having the time of their lives ruining you from behind. Good lord, man. And Moopy's Primal Rage there. He was just playing peekaboo up against Blase, trying his best to kite away from the damage. Make sure, uh, you know, he wasn't, he didn't have his team decimated by Blase, but still, the damage was done. So much was committed just to shut down that visor. And look, they've already got four ultimates ready for this next hold. It's down to 40 seconds. They're, they're finally swapping off now. More going over to Zenyatta. Gods right now holding back, has a self-destruct in reserve. Wow, Nades got command. Firelight, Panker moving in, gets a nano boost. Now diving in, gets more again off the engagement. Plus, they might be down though. Mikey A coming in from the back line. 
He's like, um, can I get a tick, please? Is he gonna get it? It's in contest, so not quite yet. They never boost Winston on the other side, but Mamma Kevy's just too split out. Every engaged Legion is just better as Paintbrush once more on the end of an enraged monkey. 10 seconds left, Mayhem Academy. They need to hope for a miracle. Krems needs to come up with just the biggest self-destruct now. He's gonna make his way onto the point just to stall it out. Is he even on there? No! They body blocked him just in time to make sure he can't even contest. Legion with the full hold. You know, I'm not actually trying to sabotage Legion here, and I'm not sure if the Owl signing window is open or closed, but if you're watching this and you're a GM of an Owl team and you want to make a good investment in the future, is your tank line bad? Are you Florida Mayhem watching this right now and wondering how you can improve your tank line to a degree or just add extra versatility? Well, let me tell you, you're, you're watching this right now. Paker of any player I've ever seen probably should be an OWL. He's Just already saying. making a case for himself. He is definitely already making a I, case for himself so far on this Winston. Yeah, I, like, not trying to sabotage Legion or anything because that would be a pretty huge boat. <laughs> but, guys, like, how much does Winston have to just ruin another team? I mean, right now, so far, uh, Gladiators as an organization, two for two on tank pickups. Fissure coming on in for them in the OWL. Now, Panker coming in for them here in Contenders, Gladiators, Legion looking to take their second map. Now all they need to do is secure one tick on point A of Numbani. Easy task here, and this might be the quickest Numbani we've had. Now, it is possible to get a counter full hold. It has happened in Overwatch, but the strength of the Legion engages here have been such that it is going to be a tough, tough ask for Mamma Cat. Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. Indeed, right now they are going to be running uh, that Soldier 76 defense where they're trying try to go for that catch dive. But we've already seen on Numbani uh, basically what the MO of most dive compositions are. Force the Soldier 76 off the high ground and then continue your dive once your cooldowns are up. And so Gladiator's Legion, we'll see if they go by that uh, plan. Well, Gladiators Legion, they have plenty of time to execute on whatever plan they've come up with, then they're not really trying to rewrite the storybook here, Chambers. Yeah. This is Overwatch 101, the most commonly played composition. I feel like if it's not, it's definitely close. And they can just brute force this way they've been playing. They've yeah. just had better game sense on these engages. Let's jump up on the high ground, wait for the cooldowns, and then force that Soldier 76 off the high ground. Put somebody on the point A. Corey, though, coming in with the flank. Never mind. Zal was able to make it out to safety. And already, they're forcing the tanks of Mayhem out. They split them up early on. They've put themselves to the point. They already almost have the first tick, so now Mayhem Academy, they have no room to bend back. They have to throw their bodies on the point, and yet, it's working out. It is working out, but oh. It's still so close right now. They don't have room for error, and it's Corey. So much room to work with. Picks off two. Wolf marking every kill for him in the process. Pulls by not sticks. Boom! Paintbrush out, and Gladiator's Legion, you're in there. You're gonna take them Bonnie and make it look easy. Make it look easy indeed, and that's just what happens when you get full held, right? They are able to just turn the screws on you little by little, force you to overextend yourself, and make sure that you can't commit to someone like a D.Va on the high ground. Gods, he got d mech but having him up there meant that, uh, I believe it was Krems, was actually not using his defense matrix on the rest of his team on the ground taking damage. And the, the bigger problem there is, too, is that they got split up so early yeah. in the fight where it's like, oh, our tank's already in a rough position. The engage was good from the Legion to begin with, Academy or MAM Academy had to bring themselves back from the brink, and unfortunately for them, they weren't able to do it. It just was all gladiators. That was just textbook uh, Numbani point A push coming out from them, especially when, when you get that full hold and all you need is a third. So Gladiators Legion, we're, we're seeing uh, what looks like, you know, the experience coming out from a lot of these players really coming to fruition so far in this matchup against Mayhem Academy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is it just seems like the, the team co-op for Legion is just light years ahead of of what we're seeing from Mayhem. Yeah, once we go to, uh, it looks like uh, that Winston Diva style, Gladiators Legion have it down. Pats, Mayhem Academy struggling with it just a little bit. Uh, now, is it just because of their skill level or is it because right now uh, they're just being outclassed by Gods and by Pinker? Right now, I think there's just a clear mechanical difference across the board mm -hmm. where Gladiators Legion, it's not just the tank play, but it's hard to ignore the continual impact of it when that sort of every fight is being fought at an advantage. Yeah. It's difficult for Mam Academy well, to kind of bring it back. And it wasn't just tanks. We have some footage here. This is a Tracer. 
Yeah, I mean, Corey just got to do whatever he wanted at the end there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Corey's just like, no just one cares about me. I'm invisible. <laughs> and you guys said this was because of how much space the, their team had created for him, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a playground for a DPS. When other parts of your team are doing well, when you're not public enemy number one, it means that you can take positions that other DPS cannot take, you can be more aggressive, and you can live and still have your life. Yeah, and the most important part is, of course, that they were able to force Zaw off the high ground, and that's how you always set it up here on Numbani Point A if you're running that dive composition. You go ahead and jump up to the high ground with your Winston, with your Diva, and your Genji. Once your cooldowns are back, you go ahead and just run at them. You still maintain your, uh, your leap cooldowns, and so once he hops down, you can either continue to engage, or because they only needed a third, they apply pressure by just jumping onto the point and force them to funnel in one by one. One thing I would like to see here from the M Academy if they are planning swap ups is simply that you do the strategy that teams in OWL do against the teams that have really good front tank lines. You start disproportionately targeting the tanks mm -hmm. where, you know, your your goal is uh, in the immortal words of effect and we'll transpose a little bit, you know, please kill Cool Matt, please. Well, please kill Panker, please. Please kill Gods, please. Focus on the front line and hope that the rest falls into place. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you guys, but all this frantic note taking has made my hands so crampy. If only I had a gym that I could work my hands out at.